Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. All right, Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Prophetic Creatives. <laughs> Glory to God. It, I'm excited about the message tonight. Uh, it's about creating things with the prophetic word. You know, Amen. God, the creator, created the world with his words. And uh, uh, it says in Hebrews 11, 3, that uh, by faith, we understand that the world was created um, by his word. That's, that's exciting. Now, we are to imitate him. Ephesians 5. Uh, verses one and two says that we are to imitate him and who is he? he's the creator and he creates with his words and he gives us the power of creative words and so we have the words within us to speak out and create uh, create things and that is exciting about the potential that's in each of you uh, creative potential and so I call it prophetic creatives. Uh, and, and we'll just go through a few uh, biblical examples. And then I want to talk about some personal examples. Uh, let's start with uh, Elijah and Elisha. Uh, uh, some people have uh, difficulty understanding me, distinguishing the two. So I've kind of changed my pronunciation of Elisha so that you can clearly see the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Elijah was the uh, older, mature prophet that had uh, uh, brought along Elisha, and uh, and so it was about time for Elijah to be taken up, and so he and Elisha walk uh, across the dry Jordan River after he split the river uh, with his uh, mantle, and so he asked uh, uh, Elisha, "What what do you want?" Uh, so we're talking about creative, creative miracles here. Uh, and, and so I asked him, what do you want? And uh, he said, <coughs> I, I want a double portion. Now, when, when Elisha said a double portion, Elijah said, oh, you've asked a hard thing mm -hmm. because something's got to be created in order oh, for me yeah. to give you a double portion oh, because wow. I only have myself a single portion and so you're asking me to create something for you uh, hallelujah mm, elijah that's good. That's good. elijah is a prophetic creative person i mean and so he's going to create something for elisha that elisha needed in his ministry uh to be able to have double portion of the spirit of elijah and so they were separated as they were walking and talking they were separated by the fiery horses and and then Elijah was taken up but now remember he only had a single portion of his spirit but uh, mm, he, he mm. released the mantle and uh, Elijah Elisha picked it up and uh, he had received uh, the double portion mm -hmm. uh, because Elijah said if you see me taken up uh, then you can have what you want uh, that's pretty exciting Hallelujah. for all of us it's possible then to ask people to give us and create things for us that we don't have and that we couldn't uh, get by ourselves. We need each other. We need one another. Mm -hmm. And so Elijah created that double portion of his spirit for Elisha uh, so that he could do twice as many miracles as Elijah has done. Now, what's interesting in Malachi, I I'll just introduce it now in uh, four, uh, Malachi 4, verses four and five, it says, God is sending back Elijah mm -hmm. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons. sons. So we're going to pick mm -hmm. that up in the mm -hmm. New Testament when we get to that in, oh, in a moment. But hallelujah. I want you to see it's, a, it's that Elijah spirit that's coming forth and it's that creative, it's that prophetic creative spirit that's coming forth. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's very important. And so when uh, we get into the New Testament and uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 17, the angels come to uh, uh, John the Baptist. His father at the time was Zacharias, uh, and, and before he was before John the Baptist was born, and he said he's going to come forth, and he's going to come forth in the power and the spirit of Elijah. Oh, hallelujah. So that, uh, that verse then was going to be fulfilled in John the Baptist, and so he came and prepared the way for Jesus. And... Uh, and then when they were on the Mount of Transfiguration in uh, Matthew 17, 
Uh, and so Jesus is walking with uh, Peter, uh, Paul, uh, I mean, Peter, <laughs> James, and John, I apologize. <laughs> and so he's walking with these three and they ask him, well, uh, we've seen Elijah up here on the Mount of Transfiguration and uh, the people have been saying that Elijah was going to come. And so Jesus makes a very interesting statement. He first of all says that Elijah is coming. And he's going mm -hmm. to restore all things. And then he says, Elijah has come. Uh, and by mm -hmm. that, he, the disciples, the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, knew that he was talking about John the Baptist. Okay, so what we see here is that the spirit and power of Elijah came on John the Baptist, and he proclaimed and prepared the way for Jesus. But then Jesus said, he is coming. So he's already come in the past, and he is coming. Hallelujah. So you look at that verse, every time you look at that, you'll see he is coming. The spirit and power is coming. So it was a past tense. John the Baptist came in it, but generation, every generation, there's going to be Peter. There's going to be uh, Elijah's uh, people oh, coming in the spirit and power of Elijah and Elijah that spirit and power is a creative power mm, he could mm. take what he had and, and double it and create what uh, someone needed that is a an incredible uh, power a creative power Elijah uh, could do it and that's the spirit that is coming in every generation that spirit and that power is coming in this generation you look at it I it's mean, coming I mean. it's coming well Matthew uh, 17, also Jesus said, and it, we're going to see that he is also a creative force, a prophetic creative mm. force, because Peter comes up to him just late, later in the 17th chapter and says, hey, some people have been, some tax collectors are, have come to me and they want us to pay taxes. And Jesus <laughs> said, well, go to the, now listen to this, <laughs> go to the sea and put in the hook he didn't say put a bunch of worms or put fish bait on it or anything like that. He said, put on a hook and the first fish that comes up, open his mouth, mouth. and there's going to be yeah. a coin, coin in it and it's going to be exactly what is needed, needed. to pay our taxes. Texas. Hallelujah. He, like our God is extravagant, but he's not wasteful. I'm, so, I mean. So, so if the... Uh, so if the tax bill was $3.50, or the coin was worth $3.50. Hallelujah. It wasn't Hallelujah. wasted. It wasn't wasted. It was the coin. It was whatever coin was needed. That's what, uh, what it was. Jesus spoke it into existence. So we're to imitate Jesus as well. We're being conformed yes, to his yes. image. He's a creative uh, force. He, he's always been that creative force because I believe all of the universe was created uh, by the Christ. Uh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By the word. By the word. Okay. So uh, we also see that uh, in Matthew 23, uh, verses uh, 30, verse 34, he said, I'm sending unto you prophets. I'm sending mm -hmm. prophets and wise men Amen. and scribes. Amen. And then in Luke uh, 1, 4, uh, 11, 49, he says, I'm sending apostles and prophets. Uh, okay, so do you see yourself in that? Do you see yourself as a, a po apostles pro or a prophet or a wise person or a scribe? You write down what God is speaking to you, you journal about what he's saying. <laughs> uh, Ruth from Texas, from, from Plano, Texas, just said, uh, amen, yes, I do. Okay. She sees herself that way, hallelujah. So I want to say you are a, pro a prophetic creative then because amen. God is sending in every generation and, and he's talking about the wisdom of God is sending these people under in the spirit and the power of Elijah the spirit and power of Elijah, who had a creative uh, power within him, and he created, well, he only had one portion, but he created another portion. A double portion. For a double portion, for because Elisha. that's what Elisha wanted. He wanted a double portion, and so Elijah didn't have it, and he said, you've asked a hard oh, thing, but I will, I will, you'll have it if you see me taken up. Well, he saw him taken up, 
And he said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. But you know, it's not just Elijah had that creative uh, uh, force and, and, uh, and Jesus, but also we see in Zechariah, a very interesting passage in the first chapter of Zechariah, and it's uh, verses 18 through 21, and Zechariah the prophet is speaking to an angel, and he and he and he sees some things on the earth, and he, he sees four horns coming forth. And he said, "What are these? Well, these are the forces. The uh, and what what the angel said really these are the armies. These are the mm. armies of Assyria and Babylon and uh, the Medes and the Persians. These are all coming forth." Uh, these are the four horns, and the horns means authority and power, and, and so these were the things that, these were the powers, the armies that scattered mm. Israel and mm. Judah and Jerusalem, and, and then here is God's solution to all of these four horns. Uh, he raised up four craftsmen, four craftsmen, mm. and those four craftsmen are, or we could say creatives, creatives, we could say the creatives, God raised up creatives mm. to bring down the armies of Assyria and Babylon and, and the Medes and the Persians because God is a spirit and he raises up creative, creative, creative forces, prophetic creatives. Oh, and that's who yeah. each of you is because, yeah. because what is a prophetic creative? It's someone. It is someone who will use the prophetic voice to create something that doesn't exist. Ooh, hallelujah. A prophetic creative is hallelujah. someone who is using uh, the prophetic voice to create something that doesn't exist to meet a need, to, to fulfill a want that somebody has. It's not all about ourselves, me, myself and I, but it's about the other people. And I want to just pause here and give a, a an example uh, the example about uh, Jamie and uh, Candace's uh, uh, son is uh, much more complicated than Sherry gave in uh, mm -hmm. the quick testimony. And certainly it's a wonderful child, but uh, there's been a battle over these yeah. past two days. There's been a battle. Yeah. And I want you to know that uh, this morning, Sherry and I have been praying about him. There were some different conditions that he had. And Sherry and I have been praying about him. And this morning, uh, the Lord spoke something to Sherry uh, about little Aiden, who was just born yesterday. And I want her to tell you what the Lord said and what she did. Well, they had given them a report, uh, report about um, his heart rate was too fast and that he was um, not breathing uh, the way they wanted him to breathe. So I asked the Lord to show me what was going on in his little body. And what the Lord showed me was a little tiny um, tear uh, around his heart area. And it was causing some difficulty. And, I, and so I asked the Lord uh, to correct that and to bring it together. And the nurse practitioner came in about, oh, 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 well, then, you, okay. And then you called them, is that right? Yes, you yes, I did. I, I called them and and told them that the Lord had already corrected the, the, the issue and, um, and that he, he had fixed it and he had brought it together and no longer did he have that little tear. And, uh, and then the nurse practitioner uh, came in about uh, 15 minutes after we got off the phone and confirmed uh, that that's uh, exactly what it was and it was nothing to be concerned about and that uh, that it was corrected and that he was breathing much better. And, you know, God is so wonderful and I give him the, the glory. Uh, but it is, it's, we can see, we can see if we ask the Lord uh, to show us what's going on, uh, he will show us what's going on. And uh, because that's part of being a prophetic uh, creative uh, that we, we can ask and receive from the Holy Spirit anything that he sees, anything that he knows, we can know and we can see. See, I want to explain it now. Sherry's given it to you and told you what has actually happened. But what I want you to know, it's important to have spiritual people around you. Amen. Sherry saw what was going on with the baby before the doctors even came and told Candace 
and Jamie what was going on. And not only that, she created the, the healing in that heart. So to make it whole uh, with her prophetic words. That, that's what a prophetic creative does. And, and that's an example of something that happened right here in uh, our lives today. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's important to have people around you who see things in mm -hmm. the spiritual I realm. Can. See, they're, they're four hours from here. They live four right. hours from here. And uh, so in reality, uh, we hadn't been there with them, but Sherry knew by the spirit what was going on with the baby and also uh, by her prophetic words uh, brought uh, healing and wholeness uh, to the heart of the baby, which create, which solved a lot of other problems Amen. that the baby was facing. Amen. And, and so that's what I'm talking about tonight, having, uh, being a creative, a prophetic creative, someone who can bring creations into existence mm. because we are to imitate God and mm -hmm. we're to follow Jesus Christ. And he spoke a coin into the fish's mouth that Amen. would exactly pay the tax uh, bill for not only for Hallelujah. Peter, but also for Jesus. Uh, it's Amen. about Amen. prophetic uh, creatives. And, and <clears throat> well, what are they? Well, they're prophets, yes. They are the seers, the people who ha who see visions and dreams, uh, and it's the prophetic intercessors, Amen. and it's prophetic the prophetic psalmist, psalmist uh, and now listen to this, and it's all those uh, who can prophesy, all can prophesy, Amen. so you are all a part of the prophetic voice, and it's that prophetic voice that mm -hmm. creates mm -hmm. things. I want to give a couple of more examples. Are you going to tell them about the, the marriage tax? About if I need something, you can. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. so what, what the Holy Spirit has been uh, uh, quickening with us is that we, as a married couple, we're supposed to create. I'm supposed to create with for Sherry what she needs. She's supposed to create for me what I'm what I need. But it also goes for you. Or uh, what what you need, right? Or uh, what is God wanting me to create for you? Just like Elijah created something for Elisha, then I have a responsibility to pray for you and to ask God what you need. Uh, and you can certainly communicate it with me, what you want, what you need, and, and I can pray and create things. See, uh, for years I have given to Sherry what I have. But I realize that that's not enough and that's not good enough that I also have to take into account that what I have may not be exactly what she needs. She may need something else, but yet I have a responsibility to create what she needs. And how do I do that? Well, I have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit Amen. so that I can hear because, see, you and I are not robots. We are we are partners with God. We are partners. So mm -hmm. we spend time with him. We get his perspective on things. And then when we come out of that perspective, out of that uh, presence of the Lord, we can declare and decree things that we couldn't do if we were separated from him. And they will have power. Our words are with power. And so this is what we're talking about today, spending time in the presence of the Lord. And then when you come out, you, you decree things into existence and not just simply because you're a robot, but, but you are a partner with God and you have power with God. And, and I want you to know that your imagination is important. <clears throat> in uh, Ephesians uh, 3.20, says that uh, God is able to do far exceeding more than we can even think or imagine. You need to stir up your imagination. And that's what I, I hope I do tonight is to stir up your Amen. imagination. Amen. Now, because uh, uh, Ephesians chapter one, verses 17 and 18, and this is a prayer, and, and this is Paul's prayer uh, for some Christians, but we can uh, embrace this prayer for ourselves and he's he's saying uh, he's praying that the spirit of revelation and, and understanding mm -hmm. uh, be uh, granted unto 
uh, these people to these believers, but they're just like you and I. And so the prayer applies to you and I, uh, to you and me, just as uh, easily as anybody else. And okay, so then the next verse, verse 18, says, and this is from the passion that I'm quoting now. He said, the light of God will illuminate your imagination. This is a prayer. And this is my prayer for you, that the light of God, now where's the light of God coming from? It's coming from the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that that light of God will illuminate your imagination. Imagination is very important. So that you will, and that will turn around and light, your light will burn brightly now so when you have a prophetic word when you have a prophetic word it enlightens your imagination you can now you say oh and now i can do this or oh i didn't know i could do that but when a prophetic word is released to you it, it should lighten up your imagination and cause you to have some potential that wasn't there beforehand. Mm. And you can see some yeah, things where right. you're going and what's going to happen uh, that you never could have imagined before. Hallelujah. But when the prophetic word comes, it gives light to your imagination. Yeah. Now you can let that light go out. But Paul said, yes. <clears throat> Kindle that fire yes, and, and yes, fight the good yes, fight of faith with that prophetic word. And when you apply the prophetic word, then your light will shine. Okay, so let's look through the sequence then. So first of all, God's light shines in you, in your imagination, and your light turns on the light of your imagination. Hallelujah. When you go after it, when you seek the Lord, when you pursue uh, what God is telling you is potential, then your light will shine forth. And, and then if we apply that to 58, Isaiah 58, well, what happens when your light shines forth? You can restore cities and you can restore streets to yeah, walk in. Yes, yes. And you, and you can, and families. And you can restore families because, mm -hmm. see, the spirit and power of Elijah is coming. And that's a creative, no, 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 no. it's a creative spirit that can take Hallelujah. one portion and create a yes, second Lord. portion yes, where there was no other portion, a yes, double Lord. portion, and give a double portion to someone he was connected to because he wanted it. Yeah. <clears throat> and he needed it in his ministry. Yes. Because he's going to create twice as many miracles as Elijah had ever created, Amen. Amen. twice as many. <clears throat> so your imagination Hallelujah. is very important. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Your imagination is very important. We light up our imagination with the prophetic word. And then after we pursue the prophetic word, uh, then our light shines. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so how does the light shine? Oh, it's by the prophetic. Yes, yes. And you create things, you bring things into existence. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let me give you a couple of examples. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me give you a couple of examples. See, um, uh, years ago, Sherry was um, diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer and she was given six months to live. Well, she had, and so what I'm going to tell you doesn't take away from her faith or what she was doing. It tells you that I had a portion, I had a part to yes, play yes, he did. in her healing. And I want to tell you what my part was. Mm -hmm. She has told you what her part was, but I want to tell you what my part was. Well, well, of course, we spent a lot of time in prayer and fasting about that situation. And and there was a night uh, one time when we were up in the mountains and, and I was uh, out uh, and, in the hallway at the uh, at the hotel, and, and I know exactly where it was. And the Lord began to speak to me, and He said uh, for me uh, to say some things to a congregation. And, and let me explain it. I was about to teach six weeks on healing, and so the first night, this is what He told me while I was up there in the mountains that night, and uh, uh, in the early hours of the morning. He said to say that my wife would be healed in that six weeks period. Okay, so the first night, 
uh, that I was teaching. And this is in January of 1993. Uh, and, and I was going to take a risk right here. I was going to step out in faith and I was going to say what I'd heard the Lord say, because this is a prophetic uh, word and this is a prophetic creative word. And, and this was related to her healing. And, and this is what I said on that night. I, was, I had a whole congregation of people and I was teaching about healing. And I said, uh, I'm going to teach about healing for six weeks. Now, the doctors have said my uh, wife will die in six months. But I'm telling you, I, my words are, she's going to stand and declare here within six weeks that God has healed her. And so, see, what happened, I released an environment that right there that night. And when I did, um, with those words, uh, there was so much power that came upon her and raised her up, and she uh, literally off the bench. She uh, literally were, was raised off of the bench, uh, and and uh, the power of God healed her. And that was the night she was healed. Uh, and and but now, if I hadn't done my part, she wouldn't have been healed. And she if hadn't done her part. She wouldn't have been healed, but she did her part. I did my part. This was my part. I made this prophetic declaration right there Hallelujah. in front of God and, and this whole congregation. And I said, although the doctors say she will die in six months, I say that she will stand and declare uh, that she was healed, but the Lord has healed her within this six weeks period. Well, actually what happened the next Wednesday night she was able to stand and declare that God had healed her. Yes. So that was something I created for her. I created that environment where the power of God could move mm -hmm. uh, upon her and, and bring her up out of her seat so that she was just up Amen. in the air and, and healed her. There was so much power uh, and it healed her. And she was healed. Uh, and so she was able to declare because she'd gone back to the doctors that Friday and the next Wednesday, she was able to come back and declare, just like I said she was, that God had healed her, and healed yeah. her that first Wednesday night. Uh, but I had to make some prophetic uh, uh, declarations in order for her to be healed of what the doctor said she would be dead in six months. Now, she's also created uh, things for me, and I want to give you an example of that, because this is what God is saying. We need to create for each other. I need to be creating for you and you need to be creating for me and I need to be creating for Sherry that what she wants, what she needs, I need to be creating uh, for you what you want and you need and and God has been moving in that way and I've been praying and declaring and decreeing things for you. Right, every, uh, every night, every night. And we so we, we, we take this seriously. It, it's something to, to apply. Now, the example I want to give you for Sherry is that God told me that I would be uh, a, a temporary department head and permanent department head here at the University of Georgia. And this was back in August 15th, 1997. And I was just sitting on my rocking chair. I had no thoughts, no intentions. No desire. No desire to be a department head. But uh, <laughs> he, he said I was his choice. I was going to be uh, the temporary department head. And so within two weeks, I was the temporary department head that uh, September the 1st, mm -hmm. I was the temporary department head. And then uh, we went in uh, over a long, long drawn out yeah, process, process. Uh, to actually determine who the permanent department head was. And it took me a couple of years to actually, and then I was appointed. Uh, and, and what's interesting during that time, uh, the people didn't want me. And the reason <laughs> God wanted me was that he wanted me to establish righteousness, righteousness in, that, in, that in that department because he was concerned about the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want you to know that there were about 100 people I was a uh, supervisor of, uh, over about 100 people. And then, but we were teaching hundreds and hundreds of students uh, every year. And, and uh, uh, some of the faculty came up with a decision actually to hire somebody else and and, and you know, they, there was an offer made to that other person. And, and I wasn't concerned about it because you know what I'd heard? I'd heard hey. the Lord say I was going to be, the, be the permanent. So I wasn't the people's choice. I was God's choice to be the department head. And, and uh, sure enough, uh, that other person didn't get hired, but they hired me. And on the first day that I became the permanent department head, and this was after a battle, a long, a long drawn out battle, 
and, and I found out why when I became the permanent department head. Mm. There were some people I had to let go, and some uh, I had to bring in a bunch of new people. Uh, and I brought in uh, people who were righteous, and I, and I let some unrighteous people uh, leave and fired mm. some people and, and do some different things. And so I turned uh, the department over. But what I want to focus in on is that very first day I was a permanent department head, and the, there was a reception for me. And so uh, here we are at the University of Georgia, and there were lots and lots of people at this big meeting, and and my wife was there, and. Uh, if you know about universities, uh, this is not a normal procedure, but uh, Sherry stood up and prophesied, and she pro gave a prophetic word that there would be seven years of great prosperity under my leadership. Hallelujah. So she created what I needed. Hallelujah. See, I told you the story about what I had created when she needed yes, something. Yes. And now I'm telling you something that she created for me. Now, this goes on all the time in our lives. Amen. Uh, but these are just two examples I wanted you to, uh, to know about. And, uh, and because maybe I hadn't shared this with you, but she did create uh, seven years of great prosperity. And then after the seven years was up, I retired. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! So it was a, it was a good, a good decision, and, and it was not my decision, but it was God's decision. And Amen. I was, I wasn't the people's choice, but I, I was God's, God's choice. choice. And, and I, I brought a lot of righteousness into that department. That's what he wanted there. And I found out he, he was concerned about those students, those hundreds and hundreds of students. He wanted them to have uh, good teachers and godly teachers and doing uh, things right. And, and so the governor of Georgia right now was one of Freddie's students. And 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 uh, so we we've had some tremendous experiences in the Lord. But what I want you to know, and this is the bottom line for tonight, that you are a prophetic a creative, creative, because that's an imitator of God, Amen. and that's an imitator Amen. of Jesus Amen. Christ. And, and and God has sent His Spirit and power. Uh, to this generation. He's sending uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and, and, and uh, wise men and scribes. He's doing that all the time. And, and if you're a part of the prophetic voice, and you should be because it's either the prophets or, or the uh, seers or, or the mm -hmm. prophetic intercessors or the prophetic psalmists mm -hmm. or those who prophesy. Hallelujah. All of those people Hallelujah. are uh, part of the prophetic voice. And if you are using the prophetic voice uh, to make prophetic uh, proclamations and decrees and mm -hmm. to create things, then you are a prophetic creative. creative. And yeah. so I encourage you to stir up your imagination. You are not a robot. You are a partner with God. You spend time with him. And when you come out of his presence, you can proclaim things uh, and uh and prophesy and bring and create things that have not existed. You call, call those things that be, be not, not as, as though they, they were, were and bring them into existence. You Amen. are Amen. a prophetic uh, 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 creative. creative. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm stirred up uh, just to, to be able to speak, uh, speak out and create what God wants us to create, to, to help someone else, to, uh, to set the environment around ourselves. And if you need a miracle in your life, then you speak it out of your mouth. You proclaim it. You decree it uh, after you've spent time with the, with the Lord and you know what's going on and what needs to be done. Isn't that right, Brother Jack? Hallelujah. You create your environment. You create your situations and so uh if there's something going on that that you don't particularly like that's around you uh then create an atmosphere of peace create an atmosphere of prosperity uh create a an atmosphere of of goodness of kindness uh, hallelujah and because our words that come out of our mouth we live or die by the words that come out of our mouth that's what it says Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Hallelujah. And so if you need more finances uh, in, your, in, your, in your life, in your family, uh, then create them. 
speak, I, I call it speaking the money into the fish's mouth. Hallelujah. Create it. Create it. That's what we are supposed to be doing because we are prophetic creatives. Amen. Hallelujah. And so um, I see Pat, Paul and Pat, and I am so thrilled about what's going on in their life and, and about the progress uh, that they're making uh, with, uh, with the new school and the new property and, and the new little children that are going to be there uh, hearing about Jesus. I just, I, I tell you, I get so excited. Hallelujah. And so, uh, but we, we will be coming to Albuquerque this, this year. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to stomp all over the land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to open up the, the floor and uh, just uh, what, what the Lord has, what is the Lord saying to you tonight, uh, you know, through this message? And and uh, do you have something that you want to, to create for this group? Hallelujah. Or someone in this group? Uh, just, uh, you know, let's be obedient to what the Lord is, is telling us to do uh, this night. So I'm opening it up right now. Hello, Prophetess. May I? Yes. Yes. Um, go. I'm trying. I'm sorry that I have my camera off. I don't feel well. Otherwise, I would be more present. Um, but I'm trying to unpack so many things throughout this sermon, this message um, that Apostle Fred spoke about. Um, first of all, I take it as a confirmation um, during my during my brother's funeral. I'm sorry. Um, during my brother's funeral, the Lord moved me to to ask him for a double portion um i know that my brother was taken home and i'm and i and i in my heart tell myself every day that what he wanted to accomplish was accomplished because he was taken home i don't want to believe otherwise but i also know that my brother has such a heart for ministry has such a heart for people has such a heart, love and there were many things that he wanted to accomplish um, for the Lord, all for the Lord's sake. And I asked the Lord to allow me to do what he wants me to do, but also give me a double portion as Elijah, um, Elijah gave Elijah um, so that I can also um, complete what he would have wanted to do as well. Um, so that was a huge confirmation. Um, and I just want to thank you so much. Um, for standing on the ledge for me, for my family, for all of us, for all of us here. Um, I've been a little bit under the weather and I also want to ask for prayer. You know, okay. I know the enemy's a liar and I ended up spending Thanksgiving in the hospital with some supposed heart issues. They had to give me nitroglycerin and they're trying to now give me medication and, and they're talking about um, some sort of something happening with my heart, which I rebuke, reject and refuse in Jesus name. But I ask that I trust this group with my spiritual life. And I ask that all of you, please keep me in prayer as I move forward, um, you know, with further testing and everything else. Keep me in prayer because there's so much that I want to do for the Lord. I mean, and I really want to do it. I really want to do it. But thank you. Thank you for this word. Thank you for being that vessel. Um, the, and pour out, you pour out into us so much. And I just want to thank you. I love you guys. I love you. We love, I love you, too, you too, as well. Okay. We love you. Does someone have a word that they want to speak uh, concerning her heart? Are you hearing from the Lord? What does the Lord say? We're going to speak what he says about her heart. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing wholeness, wholeness. Um, so that there's nothing missing and there's nothing broken. Amen. There's wholeness, Amen. Wholeness, wholeness in her arteries and her blood flow. Yes. Wholeness yes. in yes. the electrical Amen. impulses. Amen. 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 Wholeness. Hey, la, la, la. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What, and what I'm what I'm seeing is that uh, I speak to the blood flow. <laughs> Yes, uh, that's the problem. They say that yeah, the blood flow, the blood is not uh, good. Yeah, that heart. the blow is. Uh, mm -hmm. Listen to what the spirit of the Lord would say. That 
that that the the blood is flowing into the heart properly Amen. and out of the heart properly uh, the way it needs to be. And that is part of the wholeness Amen. that Sister Becky is seeing. And so that's what we speak. That's what we declare. Amen. Amen. And we have just created uh, a whole heart, a perfect heart uh, for you in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, and you will finish your course, and you will do the work of the kingdom that God has for you. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, we thank, thank you. you Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anyone else have something that they want to uh, speak to the group or to individuals? Uh, something that you want to say about the message tonight? Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. Yes. Um, I was listening to you when you said, um, Brother Fred was talking about you when you had cancer. And, um, and you were going, it was gone in six months. But um, Lenore is going for her biopsy tomorrow. And I'm believing that it's going to be dried up and done. Amen. 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 I'm having, and I'm just hope that everybody else has the same faith and 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 and, and don't be depressed around her because she's going in tomorrow. Her daughter's flying in in the morning yeah. to go with her, and I'm just like I'm believing God that is dried up and it's it's over. Amen. We agree with that, and yeah. also we shut the mouth of any unbelievers. We shut the mouth of any doubters. We shut the mouth of any bad reports in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, only good reports will be spoken to her by the doctors, by the nurses, by her family, by her friends, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's done. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's done. It's done. It's done. Thank you, I just you, want Jesus. to thank you all for this uh, message tonight. I'm sure I'm not alone, but all sorts of uh, events played through my mind as you were talking. And I believe the plan of the enemy has been uncovered in many areas of our lives. And we now know how to deal and uh, death blow to the plan of the enemy that's trying to stir up in every area of our lives that I think we've been given ammunition, information, and I believe the Lord is stirring a lot of hearts about areas that we're going to rise up and rule over instead of letting those situations rule over us. Amen. 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 Excellent. Amen. Excellent. Amen. There are some of you that are on this uh, um, Zoom meeting tonight that, that you have sight. What I mean, you, you see things. Uh, you have visions. You have dreams. You, have, you see into... Uh, the lives of others, and uh, you may not have gotten into being able to see into uh, the body functions yet, uh, but that's where you're going. That's where you're headed, and so believe the Lord for that and begin to act upon it. Uh, when you see something, begin to speak it out of your mouth and declare uh, what the Lord is telling you to say. Uh, don't shrink back and don't say, well, you know, this is just crazy, uh, but <laughs> this is who we are. You know, mucho locos. You know, this yep. is who this is who we are, and so uh, you begin to do that. Wayne, you're one of them. Hallelujah! Do not shrink back from what the the Lord has put inside of you, but come forward and bring it forth in the name of Jesus. And there will be some people that like you, and some people that don't like you. But praise God, Jesus will love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I have a word, I think, for the entire group. Uh, okay. Apostle Fred spoke the last Zoom meeting he had about uh, crafted prophecies. Yes. I yes. don't know if he remembers that or not. I certainly do. Yes. And uh, he talked about, you know, as God gives you things, write them down. And he has done that with me for years. And he will give me a prophecy and he'll say, it's not for now. Just hold it until the right time. And I've got one of those that the Lord has given me for this week. And uh, 
a couple of weeks ago, he said this. He said, watch January. He said, great change is coming, but it's not for you to fear. And then this last week, he said, over the next three months, December, January, and February, make sure that you keep your focus on me. He said that uh, 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 fear is not your portion, but love, joy, peace, and power in the Holy Ghost is your portion. Amen. Amen. He said great change is coming, and it may look, it may not look like what you have expected, but that doesn't mean that, that it is not God moving. Even though it may be strange or unusual, Hallelujah. it's still God's way. Hallelujah. He cares so much for you that he will do a new thing just so that you can be free. Amen. 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 That was Amen. beautiful. Hallelujah. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you, brother. Well, Wayne, I thank you for sharing yes. that with us. And, and I hope everyone saw just the example that was given the depth of that uh that wayne shared with us that that these meetings are not and uh, it's not all spontaneous uh, i mean if god gives you something that we need to hear well share it with us we're we're open yes amen thank you Wayne. amen beautiful beautiful okay someone else quickly have, paul i have a right, word, i have a word for lenny and jackie okay okay I just want to speak to you that I, that I saw the father laying at your feet mm. the financial resources that you need to advance his kingdom, that, mm. that he's going to give to you abundantly more than you can even think or imagine, that you don't need to be worried or concerned about the provision to be able to advance his kingdom, that he's going to give you all of that, and he's doing it for his glory. And I, I just see... Mm. I, I see like a, a big stack of money being deposited in your presence for the kingdom of God to be advanced. I just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. And we we receive that, you know, and uh, <laughs> we receive that. And, and it's not so much for us, but it's for what we feel God wants to do. Yeah. yeah, it's for Amen. his glory and for his kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because uh, you're it... willing to identify that it's not for you, then he can do it. And that's Amen. why he can do it, because you give the honor and glory to him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, it's not out there yet. Um, me, Sister Sherry, and um, Amy, and my husband, we're having a, a tent meeting on my tennis court in April. So... God, God is good. <laughs> that's, that's the same tennis court that she walks around seven times every day praying. Amen. You know? so Amen. We're, we're expecting something to happen. Yeah. Yes. God, God will do it. God will do it. No walls. no walls. It's just going to be open space. Amen. Yeah. That's our vision. It just. Yeah. No. No more walls. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hey, Sister Becky. Yes, um, the Lord would say unto you that this is a group that lives beyond, that lives beyond your means, that lives Amen. beyond your strength, that lives beyond the natural into the supernatural. Because Amen. as you live beyond, you are going to bring forth my kingdom. Because Amen. you see, Elijah lived beyond, and he was so beyond, I took him beyond the earth. And so... Amen. I am knowing, know this, that I am a God of the beyond, beyond mm -hmm. anything that you can imagine or even think. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I love the beyond. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, once you step over into the supernatural, you don't want the mundane anymore. You don't want the mess. You don't want the garbage. Uh, any longer once you step over into the supernatural realm and know that you can speak into existence uh, the things that you need and others need and 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 just 
you have the ability to worship him uh, 24 seven, uh, you know, that's, that's heaven on earth. And that's stepping on into the, into the supernatural. And then you don't want the, the other garbage any longer in, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Somebody else. We have time. I have something. All right, Miss Judy. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Um, I have, it's kind of a praise report and, and a word mixed in. Um, several weeks ago, I began to do the uh, communion every morning and uh, just privately. And I never dreamed what a difference it would make. Um, and I don't even know yet what a difference it will make, but I won't be without it. <laughs> uh, one night I had to do it at night, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, and one of the things God brought to me through that was um, he, I, all of a sudden I just realized that there are a lot of things that I have just not, hadn't even occurred to me to pray about mm. for many years. Mm. And, and it just, the scripture came to me, you have not because you ask not. Wow. Amen. And uh, here's just a real quick example. My left leg, when I was a child, probably 10 or so, came down a hill and hit a stone wall. <laughs> mm. um, my left leg was, um, the muscle was injured. And um, it's been numb for 60 years. And now it's not numb anymore. <laughs> <laughs> God's already, it's already, and I believe in he's going to fill in that, that, empty space that's in that muscle um, Amen. but you know it's just it's so exciting but the thing is um things are happening that never happened before i <laughs> you know sometimes we pray for people like if we were driving along or if we're walking we might pray for somebody but i find myself saying you know these people may not have anybody to pray for them and they're coming across my path and we're, we are stewards of the grace of God to everybody that comes across our path. Yes, and I have never yes. in my life sat at a red light and looked at my rear view mirror to pray for the people behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and God also shows us, he shows us our heart. The other day, I, I went uh, to get, the other day, I went someplace I go a lot, and I always park the same place. And when I came out, there was a homeless man sitting directly in front of where I had parked my car. And and God just shows us our heart. I I did. I judged that man, and I confess it. I judged that man. He was sitting there smoking cigarettes and talking on his cell phone, and I didn't want to pray for him. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and then, you know, now I can't forget it. I can't, I can't get rid of that. <laughs> sitting on there because I didn't have the compassion of Jesus. How often has he, has he sent people to me? How often has he prayed for me? And, and so now life is different, y'all. I don't know if you're doing communion every morning, but I just have to let that be my witness today that it is life changing. It, you know, he did say, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Amen. It is the new covenant. And we get yes. all the blessings of that new covenant when we embrace it. Amen. Amen. Praise, Amen. praise Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it was beautiful. That was beautiful. Well, I know, I know it's life to us. Yes. It's life to Brother yes. Fred and I. Yes, it is. Can I share something real quick? Please. Um, so the other night, Paul and I had a meeting. We had a Zoom meeting for work and we were eating. We were, I was getting dinner ready quickly. And, you know, we were in a little bit of a rush. And I, I took the food, the food that I had made and I lifted like it was covered. So I uncovered it and it burned my finger. And, you know, we, it just like burned the end of my finger. And so I got some ice and some water and Paul said, so what happened? And I said, oh, I burnt my finger when I, the steam burnt my finger. And so he, um, 
he just put his hand on it and prayed for it. And um, I, I kept like a cold cloth on it, but we went to, you know, we ate dinner and we had our meeting and stuff. And after the meeting, I said, wow, I don't even have a list or anything. Like there's nothing on my finger at all. Like there was no evidence that there had been a burn there. Hallelujah. And so I just wanted to share that because I think, you know, sometimes I look, I just want to see the big things. You know, I'm, I'm looking for like that, that big thing that God wants me to, to pray for or that big thing that's happening. But, yes. but I realized that God wants us to do that every moment of every day for everything yes yes Yes. he doesn't want us to wait until you know we meet someone who has cancer or something god just wants us to walk that way every day in our lives yes so i just wanted to share that because it's a kind of a it was a small i mean not not on my finger but it was a small example it was a small thing that happened but Paul was really diligent to just take care of it and to speak to it right away and to speak to the pain and to the burn to be gone. Amen. Amen. And so um, I just want to share that every moment, we, you know, we need to be looking to see what God's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Excellent. 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 I'd have Brother Jack. Amen. I, I think Haley just logged off. Um, so if anybody knows how to get in touch with her, Psalms 121 for her. Okay, um, Psalms 121. Yes, I, I'll, I'll get it to her. Okay. Okay. I will lift up the whole chapter, tell her to read the whole chapter. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, and what Sister Rebecca said, we are beyond ourselves. Um, and a lot of y'all don't know, we, we have been super busy with some changes that are taking place in my life and uh, in my family's life. And I look and I think, how in the world do we still go on? But we are going beyond our own strength with what we're doing. And Mm -hmm. and the thing is, is is I'm being refreshed while we're doing this. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. you're working and and you feel like, oh, gosh, you're just beat down. But I'm more refreshed every day. And so uh, on that, and if it's all right, I would like to to speak um, a word over everybody here that your strength will hold up. Your strength will not oh, yeah. fail. And the, because you, you know, you there. This is a busy time, a very busy time. But your strength will not fail. Just yeah. hold up and keep standing, and you'll see. And and I actually want to say you'll see the salvation of the Lord in your situation. In Jesus. Amen. Name. Amen. 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 I receive that. Yes, I receive that. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Wayne said he had a word for Haley, I think, Sister Sherry. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Okay, Wayne. Brother Wayne, do you have a word for Haley? Is she on? Uh, I, I don't think she's still on. Now, I just um, thought the, the, the Spirit of the Lord would say to her that uh, there's been some things that she didn't understand, uh, some things happening that, that seemed very unusual to her, and she didn't know exactly how to deal with them. Okay. Father, Father said they were only distractions, okay. and that uh, uh, he was going to pull back the curtain so that she could begin to see those things clearly and that there would no longer be distractions. And she would begin to move in her giftings and her callings in a new way. All right. Amen. Excellent. Excellent, Wayne. Amen. I wrote it all down, Wayne. Thank Thank you. you. Hallelujah. I'll get it to her. Thank you. One of the things I'd like to say about creating things, uh, if you're open and sensitive to the Lord and he says to create something for someone, which he's done for me a number of times. And as a matter of fact, uh, just recently uh, spoke to me about creating. He didn't say to pray about it. He said create it. And so I I just got up immediately and and, and prophesied and and, uh, declared what he said for me to create. And sometimes I know what to create. Sometimes I don't, but the Holy Spirit 
uh, knows all things and will show us. But what I want you to know is that if you're going to create something, it's not like praying where you're asking God to fix a problem. This is about you standing up and, and proclaiming what is going to be the situation and what is going to be the outcome and what is going to be the solution. This is not about asking God uh, to fix the problem. This is, you've already identified what needs to be done and you're bringing it into existence. And, and it takes you to such a higher level than just simply wanting to ask God. Because when you get through asking God, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. But when you stand up and proclaim uh, what God is uh, showing you, then you know what is going to happen. Amen. It, gives you a, it takes you to a higher level where you have confidence that you're bringing things into existence, that you're partnering with God and, and fulfilling his will on the earth. Amen. Amen. I believe that there's someone here uh, that has a prophetic word uh, for Olena. And I'm giving you an opportunity to bring it forth in Jesus' name. Uh, Alina, um, tell us again where you live, please. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's exactly the topic of my today. I live in North Carolina right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Who is it that has uh, a word for Alina? I have a scripture for you. Okay, give it, please. Isaiah 60 and verse 1, arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. All right, thank you, Brother Jack. I receive right. it, thank you. Okay, I'm going to give part of the word. All right, Becky, go ahead. Um, Alina, the Lord would say unto you that he will use you to go beyond and to call bone to come unto bone, to make connections that bring together the mighty army of God. And he will use you as you speak into the lives of those that he puts in your path and that he desires to connect which bone to which bone. And he will use you to be an instrument of those divine connections. Amen. 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 Excellent. Another part of the word for you, Olina, uh, mm -hmm. is that you are not to shrink back any longer, but that you're to step forward and do what God is calling you to do. Uh, you may be hiding behind the bush, but he sees you and he says, come forth, my child, and do what I've called you to do. This is the time. This is the season for such a time as this. I have called you. Uh, to come forth and to do what Sister Becky just said and to do what Brother Jack just said. Hallelujah. Thank you. I receive. Praise the name of Jesus. And Amen. God will give you the strength and God will give you the grace uh, to, to stand in the position that he's called you to stand in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I Thank have, you, Jesus. I have a little more. Alina, the oh, Lord Paul, says go, that, go, go. Alina, the Lord says that you are to be a light, that that you have the light of Christ in you, and he comes through you, and he wants you to shine that light into the darkness, and you're not to be afraid, and it fits with what Sherry just said, that, that you're to stand boldly in the places of darkness and shine the light of Christ, Amen. and the enemy has to flee, for there is no darkness in the presence of of Jesus Christ, the light. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Matthew, I want to hear from you. Hallelujah. There's something uh, stirring on the inside of you. I just, the whole time I'm thinking, our faith is limited to our imagination. We limit what God can and can't do in our life by what we feel he can and can't do in our lives. Amen. Wow, that when we open ourselves up to the impossible, to where, to the thing that we know there is no other way but God. Hallelujah. God, God will take it even farther. Amen. And that every doubt, every misunderstanding, every lack that we see in ourselves, that our faith will just hold on to what God has 
and believing in what he can and can't do and just letting our imagination go. I was looking at Elisha when he told us, I think it was Joe Ash, strike the ground. How many, you know, strike the ground with the arrows. And then we did it three times. Right. And Elisha got mad at him. <laughs> You're like, why did you do it nine or ten? You know, why did you just keep doing it till they were till it was completely eliminated? Right. Do Hallelujah. Limit God and what He can do. Amen. Amen. Great, man. Amen. Great, man. Okay. Okay. So Sharon, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I had a word both for Judy and Olina, and that is that I believe it's in Second Titus. It says that that God is looking for his own special people, zealous for good works. And, mm -hmm. and my feeling is that, this is what God has put on my heart, that he wants me to be more desperate. And that's why I say that to Alina and Judy. God is calling you to be more desperate. You know, even when you pray for people, pray out of desperation that God moves. And I believe that it just doesn't, does good. it's not just that God hears it, but it's that people hear desperation in your voice. And I feel that when they hear it in your voice, because both you two ladies are good speakers, you warm people, you people just are attracted to you. I think it's, you have to get desperate. And when you get desperate and you start talking out of desperation and God moves in someone's life, you give them something that you just pass something to them. You pass them an assurance that God is going to move for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Move, move, Jesus. Amen. Sister Becky, did you have something else? I did. Just, just one Thank last you. thing. Um, the Lord is, is saying to us that uh, this group of Elijah's in this group, um, he says, this creative uh, ability and that I am bringing forth to bring forth my kingdom, um, that that ability in, and that power is, is empowered you to empower others. Amen. Amen. And Amen. you empower Amen. others, you will be leaders over cities. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Michael, I see the Lord taking you into another dimension. Into another dimension. Uh, not this earthly dimension that you walk on, that you see uh, the natural things, but God is taking you into a, a new, uh, higher dimension uh, where, where you will lose yourself. You will lose yourself in this dimension. And when you lose yourself, you will gain him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and Jonathan, I say unto you uh, to speak that creative miracle into your joint in the name of Jesus, just speak it right now. Speak it to be there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Uh, I, I, thank, I thank the Lord for uh, all of you being with us. Um, uh, Medea is... Um, um, one of my eaglets, and she's uh, in, in the midst of finals right now. And so we pray over you, Medea, uh, that you will have uh, the concentration and the, uh, the ability to, uh, to make the top grade in your, on your test, on your final exams in the name of Jesus. And as you go to be with your family, uh, that you will be a, a, a glorious light, uh, that they will not be able to put out that light but that they will see the light and they will come to the light uh, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak over Corey and Lisa. It's been a while since we've heard <laughs> from the two of you, uh, but I speak uh, abundance. Uh, there's an a, a overflow coming to you, especially in tw uh, 2022. I see an overflow of his spirit. I see an overflow of his joy. I see an overflow of his finances and resources uh, coming to both of you uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Sister Becky.
The Lord would say to you, Michelle, that I am putting within you grace like a magnet Ooh. and that you will find yourself in situations where people are just drawn to you because I've poured out that grace upon you that is like a magnet to draw others unto me through your worship, through your prophecy, through your ministry. Amen. 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 Well, I praise the name of Jesus for his goodness and, and bringing all of us together tonight. Uh, we have gathered in his name and he surely uh, has been present uh, with us tonight. And I thank him for that. Uh, and we'll be back with you in two weeks. Uh, and then uh, the, the Christmas uh, holidays will be here. Uh, but we have, we have on the agenda uh, that we will be doing a, um, an international New Year's Day uh, Zoom meeting uh, where there will be many countries uh, that will be involved. We will have a translator, and uh, she works with us all the time. And that will start at 10 a.m. on New Year's Day morning. Eastern time. Eastern time. Eastern a, a, time. A prophetic conference. A prophetic conference. For the New Year. And so just get, get ready for that. <clears throat> Uh, get ready for what God is uh, saying to you about, about the new year coming up and um, that we can be an encouragement to others. Uh, so I just wanted to, to let you put that on your calendar. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've got the fire going inside of me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, Cindy's <laughs> waving her hands. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love seeing the smiles upon your faces. I love to see you uh, going forward with the Lord. It gives us great, great joy. And, uh, and so we love you. And we're going to close out for tonight. And um, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Love you. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.